Welcome to ToddFun.com and today's more giddy than fun. I'm going to do an unboxing and product review of the FLIR 1 infrared camera adapter for an iPhone 5 or iPhone 5S. Uh, what does it look like? Well, it looks like this. This is a picture of my water heater and it does temperature in there. That's nice. It does a nice blended image so you can see what you're looking at um, as far as the temperature gradient is concerned. It's not just the temperature gradient. If you're a little confused, you can always pull down and see what it was for the picture. You can do some, you can go into edit mode and do a lot of changes. We'll cover all that in the software. Uh, it, it, it is a case, so it's like an adapter case for your phone. Uh, the, the cameras on the back, it has a regular camera and an infrared camera uh, that blends the pictures as you saw with my hot water heater. Uh, you're supposed to take pictures at arm's length away, but it does have five programs that let you do several different things. Uh, one is up close, which works really well. Uh, then there's panoramic, so you can take a panoramic of a whole building and it takes really good panoramic of a whole building. Uh, it's no problems there. It has time-lapse tool where you can just set it there and it'll take a snapshot every every second or whatever you set it to. It's got some pretty good uh, control features there. Let's see, it's got a paint program which is nice. A paint program which we'll cover later lets you say, well, yeah, I like the image, but I only want to show um, just this, this, this temperature. I want the rest of it to be a regular image and you can paint out what you want to be image and or paint in what you want to be the FLIR gradient temperature and then save that image off to your to your phone so lots of powerful software features I'm going to say now that the software features are kind of buggy and fine you know maybe this is a little bit new uh, maybe it's a little bit buggy because the iOS 8 I've had a lot of problems with other apps with iOS 8 the unboxing here which I've already done and used the product but I'm going to cover the unboxing next and you get to see what comes in the box and, and how it hooks up and charges and how it integrates. You don't have to carry it around. You'll, you'll see that um, it actually comes apart so you can carry your phone around in just a small case and, and then you can leave this someplace else. This is the actual camera adapter. So you get a, you'll get a good understanding of how this product works. Uh, I think is an absolutely excellent product. If you uh, if you're looking for something for Christmas, this is the product to get. If you want to ask for something for Christmas, this is it. If you need to get something, this is it. This is really really fun. It helps you do electronics because you can see hot spots in the electronics. Help you do vehicle. If you're an HVAC guy, you can use it to you know do all types of temperature uh, testing and. It's just endless. I mean, it's just endless what this thing can do. I've already used it around the house and found some things that shouldn't be hot. I found some equipment that was on that I didn't even know was on. Uh, that was really easy. It was just like just glancing across the house and like, whoa, I didn't know that was on. Sure enough, something was on. Extremely powerful software and really it's using your phone to do a lot of the crunching, a lot of the heavy loading. Uh, and so that's why the technology is uh, uh, is really cheap. It's, it's market breaking cheap for everything it does. I mean, there's other products out there that do stuff like this. Uh, Mike at Mike's Electric Stuff did a, did a really good review of tearing this whole thing apart. I mean, he gutted this thing. So uh, I'll be a link to, to his site for that if you want to see that type of detail. If you want to buy one, uh, you can get them on Amazon for about 360 bucks. And I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the show notes for that. And uh, yeah, uh, if you use that link for me, um, then I'll get a few dollars from Amazon. It doesn't cost you any more at all. And, uh, and then I can buy other things to review um, on Todd Fun. So go ahead and do that if you want to support me. And other than software, the, the only other huge, huge problem with this is, is the charging. The, this, this, is the, this is the FLIR adapter. It has a USB charging port and it has batteries in it and you have to charge the batteries in this. Okay, fine. That's great. You know, it's got a lightning connector in there so it can, you know, it hooks up to the phone real good, but it doesn't charge the phone through the connector, through the USB. It, it only charges just the FLIR adapter. So you, in order to charge your phone every day, you have to take your phone off and plug it in separate from from this and okay I can understand you're worried about charging two devices well you can put some software in there or, or maybe it's extra chip or something and, and and so that it says okay I won't charge the phone until the FLIR is charged and as soon as the FLIR is topped off then the circuit can be smart and you can start topping off the phone because if you're an HVAC guy or you're someone who wants to carry this around and you're 
every day, you want to come home, you want to put this on the counter, you want to plug it in and have it charge. You don't want to disassemble this thing every night and plug in everything and then put it all back together the next day, every single day. And on top of that, it doesn't do data. So when you plug it in, it, it's just a charging port. It literally won't even let you get to the data. And so that's got to be changed. The next version of this product has to be able to charge your phone and, and get data. And that's not asking for much in a product like this. They're really using the power of the phone to do a lot of the images and a lot of the grunt work for the, for the image work. And that, that, burns up the, that burns up the battery on the phone. This, this phone chews through batteries pretty quick when you're doing the FLIR because of the processing power necessary for doing the image work, especially if you're recording, if you're doing lots of video recording which I already did a lot of. And so your battery is going to go down and it gets really warm and it's because it's burning through the battery. And you want to be able to plug this thing in and either continue using it or charge it, but you can't. So that's got to be fixed. FLIR, you have to fix that. Sorry, you're not getting a pass from me on that. But everything else, an amazing product. I mean, the software, even though it's buggy, it's going to be fixed later. It's very powerful. It does a lot of the things you want it to do, especially with circuits and stuff that I use it for. Uh, an amazing thing to have in your pocket. The technology has is, 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 is come so, so far down in price. 360 bucks for a, a full-on FLIR camera. We'll go over the software and stuff later because there's some things like I can't move the temperature. I got to move the phone around in order to get the temperature of the spot. I can't do that post. And eh, well, we'll cover that in the software. Let's get to the unboxing and uh, and then all the uh, live I images and photos I'll bring up and talk about. I have app version 1.12. I have a hardware version K of the phone, and my firmware on my phone is 1.0.8. So if you're out, if you can get one of these and you know, buy one on Amazon, and if you get something with newer stuff and newer software, maybe some of that will already be alle alleviated. So <laughs> uh, I have my iPhone S, and what came in the mail today? Yay! Yes, Fleur One tabs here. I don't know if just cut them, I guess. So this is one of those fancy magnetic boxes, yes. Oh, look at that. They got, <laughs> they got a color gradient going on um, on the whole thing. So uh, see the heat is what they call the FLIR 1 for the iPhone and iPhone S. Uh, S. Um, English, it's got different languages on this. Essentially shows you uh, that you have to essentially hook it up, plug it in. How convenient is this? Can I do I have to keep this completely separate or can I can I keep this attached to the case? So let's pull it out. It's nicely packaged. It's, it's light. It's not very heavy at all. So I suppose then there's there's more down in here, the documentation or something is supposed to be down in here. So we're gonna have a quick start ma manual. And it looks like we're going to have a sort of a looks like a USB adapter, USB cable. Boo! Oh goodness, some kind of adapter just fell on the floor. I'll have to go hunt it down. And that's it for the fancy box. It is quite the fancy box. I must say that's that's a fancy box, and this kind of an in, you know they're showing you heat. You can see leak around your window, and this person's exercising. But there's more electronics and, and engines and repair and stuff that just general household things that will come in handy. So step one, charge the FLIR. Oh, you got to charge this separately. Yeah, I suppose. Step two, download the app. That's pretty fast. Uh, let's see, see the heat. But that's a, that's a pretty big case comparatively. I mean, it increases the size of your phone by, oh, a lot. <laughs> uh, but this does have a, a, a detachable small case. So this is this is all the more it increases the size of your phone by, um, unless you put on the FLIR itself. So I suppose that's just going to pop in there like so. Oops, it's probably just plastic. Oops, I go in like that. Get the buttons in first, I would think. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that snaps in pretty good. Doesn't seem like it wants to come out of there. Still has a port for your camera and your flash, your Apple logo. I used to have an otter case. I, I always had an otter case on this thing so I couldn't drop it and kill it. So that's what I've always carried before. So this wouldn't obviously provide as much protection as the otter case. Um, 
but it says FLIR on the back and then this has access to your sound and and your head fit, heads set and charger and everything so that's pretty good but more importantly what will it do once you hook up to this so clearly you're going to lose access to the sound because once you stick that on you're blocking the sound for sure so and then look how deep that hole is that's why they give you that adapter that I, that I lost on the floor because you're going to need something that can penetrate all that and you're going to have to carry that around with you too so this this might have to be a separate device only when you need it you know I was kind of hoping to be a little thinner but I guess not and then so that's going to be well that's funny it's a little it's a little crooked I mean the little bezel thing looks like it's crooked but who knows so that's off and then that's going to be on and then this is calibrate so you calibrate your 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 stuff and then that's just on and then off so I guess we'll have to plug this in and get her charging. There must be a small lithium battery in there too. So let me do that and look for that little adapter, that uh, headset adapter that fell on the floor. I'm not, you know, the OtterBox was big, so I'm kind of used to carrying something pretty bulky around. And I really do want to have a Fleur with me, you know, 24-7. So I'm going to be one of those guys that carries it around probably um, as a big bulky pocket <laughs> component. And, uh, and I'll be able to use my FLIR wherever, um, yeah, but that means I'm going to have to probably clean these a bit more. If you want to you know, keep your $350, $60 device nice and tidy, then just you leave the snap-on holder case like that and, and keep your FLIR in the box. That's what most people will probably do. So software-wise, you, you go to your app and you search for FLIR 1, and you can get several apps for free, for free from FLIR systems. So I've already downloaded these and I've stuck them all in here and so the first thing they want you to do is is bring up that the app they're all kind of labeled nicely this is we'll do the close-up one first okay so then we gotta turn on the camera and we have to wait for the green light to flash which says it's happy there it goes now we gotta pull down um, and let it calibrate so we had to pull a shutter down in front of this and be careful not to let go of this It'll fling close and turn off your FLIR So you hold it down and you'll feel the phone vibrate once it's calibrated with the shutter a lot of Infrared cameras will self Calibrate with their own shutter. They actually open and close this shutter for themselves uh, Tuning is complete release handle. Oh, okay, so this one didn't vibrate, but the other app does vibrate So it's kind of hard to tell but it's 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 not the image is off but I can take and draw it like this and I can sit and realign the image for the close-up so now the background image is much closer to to my actual fingers and and my ring whereas when I was at the other way you can really see it with the ring it shows my ring is way up there that that sort of funny line is my ring in the middle of my it looks like a bad knuckle or something but that's my ring and then I can readjust that there and see now that ring heat signature of the ring is right on top of the ring likewise my outline from my hand is correct now I did find this little adapter uh, that was in the box and that so that you can you can come up inside there I guess we can come back down And, and that just lets you connect up your, your head, headphone jacks um, and easily go in and out. But I did notice that, you know, this is, a, this is pretty critical if you're, going to, uh, if you're going to do like I do, hook up a stereo, because there's no way you're going to get a stereo jack all the way up into your phone. Um, you will definitely need this extension. But if you take your headphones, if you just want to listen to music or, or talk on the phone, you, if you put it in and then plug it in, it, it does fine and then it actually is okay it's just I wouldn't be yanking it out of there so it's meant to be like that I guess and then you can plug in bigger stuff that wouldn't have the clearance otherwise I also thought earlier that because the sound came through these ports on your phone that when you plugged this in it would plug it, it you wouldn't you wouldn't hear any sound but no they were clever enough to leave little gaps right here and I have played some audio and it, uh, it actually not only sounds good it kind of brings that audio straight at you so it kind of almost tunnels the audio back out to you rather than jamming it down toward the floor so it's actually uh, actually improves the sound 
And then on the bottom, there is a charge indicator. This light will flash uh, when it's charging and then be solid green when, when the FLIR is charged. Only, only the FLIR is, is got batteries in it that's charged. It does not charge your phone. You'll have to disconnect and charge your phone separate. Yeah, I already ranted about that. But if you lay it down, there's enough of a, of a ridge here to prevent the glass from hitting the surface. So a little protection, um, it, but I'm gonna carry it around as an actual FLIR camera myself. So other than the fact that I gotta take it apart every night to charge my phone, thanks a lot, FLIR. This would be our water heater. And then the hot flu, ga flu gases, it's a, it's a gas fired water heater going up through the roof. And you can see where the heat is at the bottom, all normal operation there. But you certainly can see the hot spots. Look at my Jeep from the side, so you could tell if you, if you had like really one break really hotter compared to the others. Wow, well there's the motor. And you can see where the radiator is. That's pretty clear where the radiator is going in. That is quite amazing. Of course, the heads are pretty hot. I like the way it outlines all the images. It does a really good job of that. Makes it easy to know what I'm looking at. And if I had a break in one of these wires, I could easily find, I could more easily find it. Probably use a close-up version though. My electronics bench. Let's look at some circuits. Wait a minute, what's hot up there? There shouldn't be anything hot up high on my bench. I don't have anything on up there, I don't think. What in the world is up here? That's Why is this guy so warm? Why are you warm? Oh my goodness, this LaCroix scope doesn't have an actual... Oh yeah, that La La LaCroix scope. It's got a soft switch. It doesn't have a real power switch. Oh, so that's the LaCroix up there gobbling up a little bit of power, waiting for someone to hit. Because most nothing should be plugged in up on my electronics bench. I don't really have anything running right now. So this is interesting. This is my extra lamp I use for recording. And sort of a power switch here you use to uh, change the brightness. And it is obviously warm all the time. And so that silly little switch for turning the light on and off is running at 121 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my lord, all the time. What in the heck is in there? It's a regulator, I guess. Here we have the Arduino Uno. And we uh, have a few hot spots. This hot spot here is, is the chip that does the USB to serial on the Uno. Um, this hot spot is the regulator. And this hot spot over here is a diode for the regulation. The center of the, the very center where the die is in the chip, you can see that's a little warm too. And that's about it. When you see a glare elk over here, you see that glare. That's not a hot spot. That's just the emissivity. It's a reflective surface. Yeah, so you can find out what's the hottest chip and hottest parts of your circuit boards. Okay, this is uh, my son eating an icy uh, with the cold setting on. Let's switch to the hot setting. And this is the hot spot setting rather than the cold setting. Wait, we got something on your phone. Yeah, I know. This is the actual iron flur. Yeah. And there's the plasma television. What? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see, <laughs> point it at me. What? It's recording, point it at me. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, that's uh, That's really don't wicked. Go too fast. What? <laughs> what? It's a, it's a blur. We <laughs> go gray. Rainbow Contrast 
If you get change what's in the background, it kind of switches things out. And then we got Arctic. Well, it wraps around back to cold again. There's that icy he's eating. Wow, so my coffee pot, which is always keeping water warm, because it's one of those Keurig ones. And interestingly enough, the dishwasher has an extremely hot spot, and we haven't even been using it. And if I reach up and feel it, it is, it is quite warm right there. Even to the, I mean, I can feel the warmth. So that's a quite a hot spot for that control that's never even used. We just, just cooked, we cooked a pizza recently, so that's the oven. I don't think it's an emissivity thing. I think this is actually warm. Yeah, it's a... I suppose because the display is a uh, vacuum fluorescent display, they, they, they have heaters in them, and so it's showing you that you're producing heat all the time. It's not an LCD display. What do we have over here? We have our refrigerator. Of course, there's going to be a ton of heat coming off the back of the refrigerator. Not sure exactly why there's a hot spot right here on the fridge. Well, yeah, it is warm though. Might be uh, something to do with a, a defroster or something, but it is warm there. The piano does have a uh, humidifier and a heater in it, so that's why the piano shows up warm. Oh, wait a minute, we have a hot spot over here, and there should not be anything hot over here. What in? It's a power brick. Oh, somebody left my Commodore on. Just unplug that. Someone needs to know. Not to leave that stuff plugged in. So we're in the bathroom here, and as you can see, the outlet looks pretty darn hot. That's a GFI um, ground fault interrupt. It actually has a lot of things downstream hooked up to it. Even though nothing's plugged in here, uh, there's, there's a lot of devices downstream, like the outside in the garage is hooked up to this. And yeah, that, uh, that outlet probably uh, had 90 degrees in there. Probably, you know, has some bad old corroded contacts. Um, could probably be better, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not that bad that you would have to, that you'd have to replace it. But, yeah, it makes it easy to find and decide whether or not you want to address the issue. Okay, I'm in a dark area now under a sink. You, you don't get a good image overlay, so let me see if I can uh, turn on my light. You turn on the camera light from within the FLIR software, and it, it because the light now, I get a good overlay. Uh, line drawing around my image. So now I can tell more what I'm looking at in the dark area. So in this room we have a very hot um, cable box and a laptop of course. And you can see someone had their hand here earlier. I had my hand there earlier but that's what's really neat about thermal images. You put your hand someplace and well there's Im there's just, just there's <laughs> you leave the trail. Wow, check this out. It's a DVD player that my son doesn't even use sitting underneath his television. Turn the hot spot on and see just what type of temperature we're getting there. About 93 and a half, 94. That's on all the time. I think I might have him unplug that. So can you guess where the AC is coming out? The coldest part of the AC coming out of my AC unit. That's the outlet for the AC. It's so the hot spot there is getting to be about 103. Not too bad, I guess. Well, I hope that was a really reasonable uh, unboxing and demonstration of the product. I was going to go through all the bits of software, those five apps, but rather than that, just know that all but the main app, they're pretty buggy. Uh, and I'm not going to try and I'm not going to try and cover them. I'll fix some of them anyway. But just sort of to, to go through sort of the general list I have here. The camera run, runs at 640 by 480, and it, it shoots at about five. I notice five, sometimes seven, sometimes four frames per second. So you don't want to move the camera fast when recording. It just will get choppy on you really bad. Uh, when you are actually in a record mode. If you don't have the temperature hotspot, that little X in the center of the screen. If you don't have that up, you have to actually stop your recording, turn it on, and then start the recording again. I would kind of rather have that as sort of like one of those fast switches that you can turn on and off. Also, you, you can't move the spot around. You have to move the phone around to get the temperature. I would like to be able to just move it around on the screen, and maybe that's too interactive or something. I don't know. If you can't, then at least let me save the picture, and I'm sure the picture is saved with all the temperature grading information. And then 
you can uh, uh, you can let me move around in that temperature greeting with the pointer, and then I'll know what the different temperatures are. I can take different measurements. That's not possible with the software right now. A bit of annoying software with all of them, all the pro apps is is there was a help menu that would come up when you first use the program. Great, that's fine. But if it goes away or you want to see it again, you can't get to it. It's just gone. The main app does have a help menu, but it's not the same as that little quick tutorial that comes up. I think it'd be nice if there was a way to bring that back up again, especially if you borrow your, your phone to somebody and they have never used it before. You don't have to explain it. The little pop-up will, will tell them everything they need to know. There's no, no way to get back to it. In fact, a couple times it would went away because I touched my screen and I'm like, I don't even know what it said. So yeah, bring it back. And along the lines with, uh, with sharing, it's not critical, but it'd be nice if there was a way to lock your screen and then let, the, let someone use your iPhone with your Fleur. And then they could, they could go someplace and just you know, look at something or check something and you don't have to worry about them using your phone. Sort of like when you have those MP3 players where, where the screen is in lock mode but you can still control the, the audio playback and stuff. It might be something nice like that to add to a future feature. A buggy issue was during record mode, very frequently it would stop recording. It would tell you it stopped recording so you knew and you didn't lose anything you recorded but it, it just kept saying there was a problem with the iPhone and the recording would stop. You'd start it again it'd be while, good for a while so that's buggy and that was with the, all the apps. Another update to the feature set for these apps is to make them more interactive. You can't be using the main Fleur device app, take a picture and then go, gee, I'd really like to use the Paint app with this, and then go open it with the Paint app. There, there's options to say open or send to, but the Paint app isn't one of them. So the only way to use the Paint app is to take the picture in the Paint app. Well, what if you didn't? What if you took the picture right on site with the main Fleur camera, and then you wanted to do the paint, where you just paint out the part you're interested in? Can't do it. So that's a feature set that has to be added. Also referencing storage, the FLIR app, the FLIR, the FLIR device itself does not store any uh, images. It's all stored on the phone, which is fine, but it's stored in a proprietary area where you can't get to it uh, from the phone or when you plug in and, and transfer data to, from and to your phone, you can't see this, this information. And if you want that to be accessible, you have to essentially copy it from the app itself. You have to copy it to the, I, the iPhone library. And in doing so, I'm sure it takes all the information that it had captured and it crunches it down to a JPEG and then copies it out. So it's actually, not only is it a separate image, a separate copy, it's, it's less information than what is in the Fleur app. So this means that you, if you are, you know, bring, of course you're going to bring this stuff out to where you can use it and other things and send it to things. And when doing so, you're going to have multiple copies. So you have to manage the storage of the media, the videos and the, and the photos. You have to manage them within the app separately. They're, they're not integrated and you have to manage the secondary storages in your in your iPhone library. So you got a lot of extra files. It would be nice if they were to integrate all this in some way. So at least even if you even if you can't access and use the files from outside the apps, it'd be nice if all five apps integrated their management of the files together as well as it would be nice if there was some way to just manage the deleting of them from the iTunes library or from another app where you could manage them all. Uh, it's just a little, a little, a lot of extra work managing the photos is all. The Paint app itself had, well they were all buggy, the secondary apps were all buggy, but the Paint app in particular, the one you take a picture in the Paint app and then you, you have to go to edit it, it's not there, it's just a blank screen. And you only realize after you go back and forth you'll see your picture or if you hit save this blank image you, you can actually save a blank screen and then, and then after that it would show up for edit. I don't know, just buggy, but twiddle with it, you'll figure it out. They'll fix it later. In the close-up app, where you have to adjust essentially the parallaxing of the of the FLIR image and the uh, camera image, it didn't have enough adjustment, so you couldn't quite line up your image with your heat signature, with, with the heat gradient image, so they need to be more adjustment there. And all the apps, except for the main app, it was really confusing to know when you were recording or not because they would give you a red circle and apparently you click the red circle it turns into a red square and you quickly you kind of forget red square red circle which one is which you know just do like the main app and make it show that you're recording and, and I get it you know and don't be so wiggy with the stupid little gifs 
And the last thing I want to mention about the uh, bugginess of the apps is the time-lapse uh, program. It, it wasn't really intuitive that I want to record for this many minutes. It just didn't work that way. And so maybe they'll make it better later and, and more understandable. And you have to, you can't just cancel it once you start it. You, it has to run a certain amount of time because it's kind of just trying to stitch together a movie for you. And it can't stitch together that movie if, if it doesn't have enough photos. So you, you can't even cancel it. Like, well, what if I just want to cancel it? Oh, well, anyway, those things will be fixed. I'm not worried about that, especially if people get out there and start complaining and saying, you know, you can't have this wonderful device and these crazy, silly apps, you know. So that will get better. Well, I really hope you liked uh, my uh, unboxing and review of the FLIR 1 uh, infrared camera adapter. Uh, if you liked it, please give a thumbs up, rate it, that is, and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, comment if you need to know anything more, or just want to uh, give me a Haiti duty. Uh, that all really helps my channel. Uh, share this video. This one would be a great one. This is a great present for people, a great thing. If you know someone who has everything or a gal or guy who has everything, well, they don't have this. So here, here's a great thing. They could, you send it and share it with people and so people know that this is out there for Christmas. And uh, if you don't have one, get it.